In this video, I'm going to try to demonstrate the functionality of my OpenFlow application to control, uh, to reinforce resource allocation over a multi tenant network. By multi tenant network, we mean that we want to provide different views of the network, different virtual networks over the same underlying infrastructure to different tenants. By tenants, we, we, this scenario is very used on data centers. So for example, you have different tenants, uh, which means different machines, and those machines are isolated in the same infrastructure, and they share the same underlying infrastructure. One challenge is the resource allocation. We want to provide some resource allocation using OpenFlow 1.3 tools. For that, we're going to use the Ryu OpenFlow con controller and the OpenFlow reference software reference software switches. So our network, our topologies, this as you can see, we basically have hosts one, two, three, and four as virtual machines that would be installed in that would be inside a physical machine. Switch one and switch three are different switches that are installed all in the same virtual in the same physical machine and they are guaranteeing the virtual network they are providing the virtual network between the machine one which includes all these guys here and machine two the switch number five would be the top of hack switch so our topology includes host one two and three on VLAN 10 host four on VLAN 20 Hosts 5, 6, and 7 are also on VLAN 20, and host 8 is on VLAN 10. So our application provides resource, provides isolation between the traffic, but by that we mean that each host 1 will not be able to, pay, to connect to host 4, or 5, or 6, or 7. And we're, we guarantee isolation between the tenants and the VLANs. All right? uh, and we also want to guarantee some resource allocation. How are we going to do that? We're going to do that by using some priority queues. We're going to make sure that VLANs, that the traffic, so I'm actually just going to skip, skip straight to the demonstration. And so what I'm going to do here is to start my controller and to start my topology. As you can see here, there's some control information. I'm going to go ahead and show you my flow tables for switch 3. First thing I'm actually going to show you is my meter config. So as you can see here, there are two meters installed. Meter 1 represents VLAN 10, which is going to do the following. For every traffic that goes through switch 3, outgoing switch towards switch 1, He's going to measure the traffic, and as traffic goes through the through this threshold, which is 1 megabit per second, he's going to tag the packet with the precedence level. He's going to change the precedence level of the IP type of service flag, the IP type of service field. And for VLAN 20, we're going to do the same, but we have a different threshold. That means that we're trying and switch 1 later on is going to based on this type of service flag he's gonna reassign the VLANs for the packets that are not for the packs that are going through the network so we're gonna try to make sure that all the packets uh, that are under this threshold are being prioritized in the network we're gonna use layer 2 technology to 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 do this prioritization so as you can see here so now let's go ahead and ping from host 1 to a host 2 to host 8. Actually, let's try host 3 first. So it works. They're in the same network, same layer 2 network. Now let's try host 4. It doesn't work because they're not in the same VLAN. Now let's go ahead and ping host 8. It works because they are in the same VLAN. Now let's also open host 5. Try to ping host 6 it works, host 8 it's not going to work okay because they are in different VLANs so that was the traffic isolation the easy part of the, the project so now let's go ahead and see how does the JSCP remarking works so not the JSCP actually let me just explain the trunking real quick so as we 
if we open Wireshark here and we watch this outgoing link from switch 3 actually from switch 2 you can see the the packets are being tagged with VLAN 10 here right so and if we open the link here the access links they're not going to be tagged so let's go ahead and open this this is just still part of the trunking so we're just basically delivering tagged packets to the top of hack switch but that will be important later on now let's go ahead and generate some different amount of traffic let's go let's go to host 8 and turn on iperf there So let's capture some traffic. So from let's just go to switch one and capture traffic. So switch one has the outgoing the the traffic outgoing from switch three just left towards switch one just left the meter. So he he was just meter. So every traffic that's over the threshold is going to be tagged. So if we do some analysis on the traffic here, so as you can see, you can see the traffic there. Let's now see, show all the traffic that's not where the type of service is intact. And this is kind of a constant fill, which is supposed to be one megabit per second. So let's also go ahead and show the amount of traffic that is not being tagged with the flag. So what happens next is switch 1 is going to reassign the VLANs based on the packets that were flagged on switch 3 on the access switch. So let's go ahead and change the interface that we are looking at. Let's close this. Let's generate some traffic again. And now, if we filter the traffic using the VLAN ID, then you can see that the traffic was reassigned to VLAN 11. And there's still some portion of the traffic there is still in VLAN 10. Later on, switch 5 will prioritize all the traffic on VLAN 10, thus guaranteeing some resource allocation. So again, the solution aims to provide some resource allocation over a multi-tenant scenario where we would provide we would like to provide different virtual networks using the same underlying infrastructure, but we would still like to provide to to reinforce resource allocation between these different tenants. And that was the project. Thank you.